Well, hello everybody again in Stage Centre land. Look who I have got with me. I'm feeling very excited. A little bit fangirlish at the moment. <laughs> so, me too. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks. <clears throat> Introducing Phil Scott. Now, Phil, is there anything you don't do in the land of theatre? I mean, I've just, you know, just brushing up on, on, on what I, and adding to what I already know about you. And I just had to stop reading. I just can't take that many notes. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you've done everything. So, You've I, obviously never seen. Oh, you've never seen me dance, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> okay, we'll leave dancing out. So, but that's yeah. probably the one, well, the one small thing. But Phil Scott has been described as one of Australia's national treasures in theatre, and honestly, everything from you've you've even written some comic novels. You've done musicals, acting, singing, composing, <laughs> cabaret. Oh my gosh, it just just goes on and on and on. So. Um, we're really missing seeing you out and about at the moment with this COVID drama, Phil, with all of those talents. Oh, well, um, yeah, well, we're all having to cope with it in some way or another, aren't we? Um, yeah. Luckily, because I write, that's something you can do in isolation at home, locked down. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, motivation levels around about minus 10. But, uh, yeah, yes, we everyone in this business, apart from, you know, the financial difficulties that mm -hmm. we're facing, is desperate to get out there and 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 work you know especially people who work in live live theater and live cabaret and things like that to get out there and really connect with an audience again it's so important mm, mm. and that's the thing as, as performers and you know i've done singing in in my life as well it's just that that beautiful energy uh that comes from the interaction and connection between the artist and and the musicians and and the audience it's it's magical isn't it Oh, it is. That's what makes that's what makes live live work so special, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's amazing things you can do digi digitally, and like I was saying to you before we started the interview, um, we are now all thinking in terms of the digital media much more, um, well, much in a much smarter way, I think, than than we were before, or certainly some people were right on top of it before. But yeah. this has galvanised people to go yeah. there. But still, there's nothing like that. That feeling, especially if you're in an audience and you're watching something and it, something fabulous happens and you think, this that'll never happen like that ever again, you know. I was there for that moment. Yeah, yes. it's yes. it's just a great feeling. Yeah. That's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? You know, and I've been working yeah. on shows with people and you can see the same show, but it's never the same show. There's always some <clears throat> little subtle nuance or something that happens differently or a magical moment or a pause. or So that is, as you say, the beauty of, of live performance, which... We also desperately miss um, in those areas where we, we can't access it at the moment. Okay. But, at the moment. Yeah, at the moment, won't be long. And um, and we're going to talk about a couple of those opportunities. But <clears throat> people out there may very well know Phil from lots of things. One of them, including it's something that you, you're super proud of, which is the Wharf Review. Tell us a little bit about the Wharf Review. Oh, OK. Well, that's one of my three income streams, if you like. Um, <laughs> And it's uh, the Wolf Review uh, is a political satire show, and there's four people in it: three guys and a girl, usually. Yeah. Although uh, sometimes we have two girls, two guys. Um, and Jonathan Biggins, Drew Forsyth, and myself are kind of the basic writers, creators of it. Yeah. And for twenty years, twenty, you know, um, we've been at the Sydney Theatre Company, yeah, wow. doing that once a year and twice a year earlier on but that was just too much after a while um and it's based on the you know the politicians and the, the policies but also the social issues of the day and um like you know for example people like katie hopkins come up in the news that'll get a mention that sort of thing yeah um <clears throat> and we've uh decided to produce it ourselves and and take you know take full control of it um, with, you know, the STC's blessing and it's all, you know, fine. Yes. So the plan is, um, COVID uh, allowing, that we will be doing a new one called A Can of Worms, which uh, has nothing to do with Canberra, uh, <laughs> but we are opening, <laughs> I mean, Parliament anyway, we are opening in Canberra on, yep. I think, the 1st of November, and then we're coming to Sydney to the Seymour Centre to do that. And it'll be, uh, and then next year, the regions and touring to Melbourne and Hobart, hopefully, places like that. So uh, 
it's um, myself and the two boys and Amanda Bishop, who has been our, our chick in it for uh, quite a while. Yes. In fact, long enough to um, shack up with Jonathan. So there we go. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> A bit of goss there, people. Yeah. A little bit of goss, yeah. Oh, it's no secret. Yeah. Um, and, um, well, I mean, it, it's come at the, oh, it's come at the right end of the year as far as um, our lockdown and vaccine rollout and everything goes. So hopefully that yeah. will happen. But uh, it's a great fun show to do. It's basically sketches, monologues, yeah. songs, impersonations of people, mostly political people. I mean, Mandy does fabulous. Um, Jacinda Ardern, she does a great Gladys Spirit Chicklin. And, and yeah. years ago when it was mattered, she did Julia Gillard, you know. Yeah. She's fabulous. And, uh, uh, and we all have our our things and, yeah. um yeah so we're looking forward to doing that oh, good 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 well yeah. i'm looking forward and to I seeing that back in canberra because i have seen the wharf review here where we are and it is a hilarious show it's very well done so I highly encourage everyone to get tickets for that when they come out but we're also here talking today about you know something else that you're doing in the meantime and given our discussions about what's possible digitally and all of the challenges that that the industry is facing you are going to be appearing with your dear friend Kath Alcorn and some lovely friends this Friday night for Friday night live with Catherine and friends that's going to be great because I saw it the other week and it was such a lot of fun how are you feeling about that oh I can't wait that'll be great and um and Catherine is, you know, a fabulous singer and she's got a great sense of humour and we get on stunningly well. Yes. And <clears throat> we have a, a show called 30 Something, which we, yes. we're doing around the place, which yes. is set on New Year's Eve 1939. So it's kind of like a, a catastrophe is about to happen. Yeah. It's, we're kind of moved on a little bit because the catastrophe happened since we first did it in 2019. Oh. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> but um, that's great fun and we've, we're hoping to get that out there live as well. Yeah, but yeah. Um, because of uh, lockdowns and, you know, restrictions, mm. last year, Kath got this Friday Night Live thing happening. Yeah. And um, I, I did a, a guest last year with that. And it's, uh, she, um, it's a fabulous team of people. It's Ted yeah. Robinson is directing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, it's not a particularly well-known name, maybe, but he was the man responsible for... Oh, um, Good News Week, um, the Will Anderson shows, you know, all that stuff on the ABC a little while ago. Yes. Um, the big gig before that. Yes. And uh, so he really knows his stuff. Yeah, you worked on all of those, didn't you? I worked on, well, I didn't work with Will, but I worked on, right. on several others. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, so I've known Ted for ages. And so, I mean, the other good thing is, this is more musical than comedy for me, in a way. Yeah. Um, but particularly going through the Melbourne um, Digital Concert Hall, which is mm. does some quite legit classical concerts as well. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's a chance for me to do some bit of piano playing. Yeah. And on and on Friday, um, my brother is going to play a number with me. He's a jazz bass player. Oh, true. And. And uh, he, until very recently, he was the head of the jazz department at the Conservatorium of Music in New South Wales. Yeah. And uh, he's a fabulous guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And totally bald. And what, what else can I say about him? <laughs> <laughs> but so, well, so a, lot of things, and, a lot of things run in the family, then, it would say. Yeah. yeah. And it's a real sort of, um, I, look, I've never worked with Ursula Yovich. I've been a huge admirer of hers yeah. for ages she's absolutely amazing yeah. I, in fact I don't know if I've met her even maybe I have oh, wow. but anyway she's mm. she's a guest but yeah. everyone else I like Jean Kitson the comedian yeah. I've known Jean forever we worked on the big gig together and you know Kath as well and the members of the band yeah. um you know it's all a big family thing yeah it's great oh it'll be a great so, show I, I can't, I can't I, I have to confess, I don't know, it might be a bit of oversharing, but uh, the last show, I thought I'm really, you know, going to take advantage of this Friday night in and I ran a great big bath, got myself all decked up, had a <laughs> lovely time, had a languished in the bath, texting Varushka. Um, so it, it's, oh, Varushka, well. Yes, well, yeah. people, and we love Varushka Darling. I just can't get enough of Varushka Darling. Um, she is just... That'd be her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably her now, messaging. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't get it, get enough of her. She's just hilarious. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be, I promised that I was going to 
tune in from the bath again and uh, enjoy another another night in. And I know many, many of my friends and people who watched it last time can't wait for Catherine and Friends again. So as you said, there's yourself, Ursula Jovic, Jean Kitson, um, of course, the fabulous Catherine herself, Varushka. It's going to be a night of all kinds of a, a real good old fashioned um, but digitally done variety show, which which is such a great opportunity for people to be entertained. It is. And you know what else I love about it? And, I, and this was true last year and I have, I'm sure it'll be true again, yeah. is that because we're, we actually can't all get together and rehearse, you know, the hell out of it. Yeah. Um, it's slightly when you get to doing live stuff, yeah. it's a little bit on edge. Yeah. The show the big went out on television live, but yeah. normally they don't. Normally they record things, then they take out all the messy stuff. Yes. But there might be a slight rough edge to, you know, the transitions and things. I love all that yeah, because and, and when you're watching it's like watching a live show because you think yeah they can't go back and fix that now <laughs> <laughs> That's right. so we don't we don't know what's going to happen people goodness knows it could be really no. exciting um so so you mentioned the melbourne digital concert hall what a big shout out for them aren't they doing great things like that that's really enabled artists like yourself to find another vehicle to perform to entertain to keep doing what you love and also to to survive, you know, in this really challenging. Yeah, they, they've done, they've put out hundreds of uh, concerts. Yeah. And uh, this is part of a series called Standing with Sydney, which yeah. another another great thing because, you know, the last thing we need at times like this is this kind of state rivalry and saying yeah. Sydney's got a gold standard, turned out to be a fool's gold standard, yeah. um, you know, but... Yeah. You know, it's not about us versus them. We no, this no. thing everywhere, and we all have to deal with it together. And I just, I think it's great. I'm yeah. so thrilled. It's the Melbourne Digital Digital yeah. Concert Hall. And I think this, this this whole challenge really is. I mean, artists are by nature collaborators anyway. But I think mm. it's 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 added an extra layer to the kind of collaboration that's happening across the country, where where people. You know, the challenges are, are, are waxing and waning across different states and different areas. You know, theatres are open and they're closed. Venues are open and they're closed. So it's lovely to see how people can work together to support each other and, and support and continue this industry, which we all love and on which so much depends, you know. Uh, so it does such a lot for society, having our beautiful performing arts community thriving. So thank you phil I, I mean we could just talk forever about all the things that you do people go and google phil and then you'll just if you haven't heard of him before go and do a bit of googling and you'll be even more impressed um and we can't wait to see you this friday night with with catherine and friends and um and thank you Kath, for, for you know all that you're doing to pull all this stuff together it's a fabulous yeah thing. yeah uh, you can go to the stage center app uh, for those people who don't know about it, it's free to download from Apple and Google Play, and that will uh, head you to the, the link to buy your tickets from the Melbourne Digital Concert Hall. And the great thing about that too, Phil, isn't it, that you don't have to, if you can't get there on Friday night, you've got 72 hours to watch the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it has to be that way because yeah. it can be. And yeah, and yeah that's brilliant. Yeah, so people, you can you can tune in, get your ticket. It's only twenty four dollars. Twenty of that goes to the to the artists and everybody involved in the show, which is wonderful. Um, so so you you know supporting yourself while you're supporting our industry. Get online, get those tickets, and keep an eye out because there will be more uh, Catherine and Friends standing with Sydney's coming up. I uh, think in the fortnightly schedule for a little while, isn't that right? Uh, yes, I believe there's more. Yeah. 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 So I'm not sure how many, but. It's, yeah. it's such a good thing. Let's keep oh, doing it. <laughs> it is, absolutely. And anyone from around the world can tune in, and they have been. And um, and everyone, please keep an eye out for the Wharf Review when it's appearing next. And I know, can't wait. I'm excited. I'm going to be getting my tickets to, to head down there, and, and we'll catch up with you again. Follow us here on Stage Centre uh, so that you keep abreast of, of you know what shows are happening, uh, more interviews like this, and um, how you can support the industry as well as being entertained. Thanks so much, Phil, for hanging out with us in our virtual office today. Oh, thank you, Bernie. It's a pleasure <laughs> to talk to you. you. You're most welcome, mate. And all the very best for Friday. Uh, I'll be in the bath, having a lovely bubble bath, enjoying it all, um, and uh, and can't wait to see what happens. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye.